We have another Whiteboard Wednesday today. And today's topic is pornography. We're not going to be looking up pornography or anything like that or showing images, but we want to talk about this and get into it. And what is pornography, what pornography isn't. And pornography, so you know, it's any illicit sexual image, writing, text, story, audible. You probably know if you viewed or read what pornography is because your conscience tells you otherwise. Now, the word comes from a Greek word, pornonias, which means sexual immorality. So that's the porno part. And then graphe means writing. So it's sexually immoral writings. And if you were curious, is God on board with pornography? Let me read you from 1 Thessalonians here. One little verse. And that says this. You know, what, what's God's will for my life regarding this? And here's what 1 Thessalonians 4, 3 says. It says, for this is the will of God. If you ever wondered what the will of God is, your sanctification, that you abstain from sexual immorality. And that's the word pornonia. So this is God's will for you. If you're a Christian, if you're not a Christian, it's still God's will for you. But you got bigger problems. You need to get right with Christ. But this is God's will for you. You abstain from pornography. So if you're a Christian, and we like to say we struggle with this. A lot of people don't struggle. They, they use the word struggle or wrestle. But if you're wrestling, you're in a battle. A lot of people just view pornography or read pornography, whether it's a woman's romance book or something on the internet, and they view it and participate in it and don't like it. And they're like, I'm bummed. I don't like this. I'm wrestling with it. That's not really wrestling. That's just falling to temptation. So we want to talk about ways to overcome this temptation, I believe, by the Holy Spirit. A spirit indwelt Christian, which is every born again believer, should have the ability to overcome sin. When you are saved, you're saved not only from the penalty of sin, that is eternal damnation, eternal judgment from God. You're also saved from the power of sin. So not just sin acts, but the power of sin that's controlled your life before you're born again. So there is hope, especially if you feel downtrodden or, or beat up. You're like, I can never get victory over this. I do believe by the power of God that you can have victory over it. Now, there's three things I want to talk about that will really lead you into the path of pornography. If these three things are there, you are going to participate or view or do whatever with pornography. And these three things are, we'll do one, is accessibility. If you have access to pornography with these other two things in, in mind, these three factors, you'll view or participate in pornography. The next thing is, we'll call it accountability. And then the third is your appetite. So if you have an appetite for pornography, you have access to it, and there's pretty much no accountability. There's no one around to make you feel ashamed or stop you. You will indulge in pornography. But as a Christian, we want to help you. Let's remove some of these obstacles in a sense. And our ultimate goal is your appetite. But guess what? The Bible says we shouldn't make provisions for the flesh. A provision for the flesh is something that you would put in place that would feed your flesh. Say someone likes to get drunk a lot, uh, to make a provision for their flesh would be to keep booze in the house, to have access to alcohol. Now, to make no provision for your flesh would mean to remove access to pornography. So that's your accessibility. Jesus, he tells us in Matthew chapter 5 that if you look at a woman with lust, you've committed adultery in your heart. He's condemning planet Earth on this. And he also says, it's better to pluck out your eyes, better to chop off your hand than to go into hell indulging in these things. That's an extreme statement. And your accessibility needs to be extreme. If you're truly, genuinely wanting to help yourself out of this, you're convicted by the sin, you know this isn't right, and you've been like, man, God, I need help. And you keep just praying that your appetite changes overnight. God, just take this appetite away, take this appetite away. And it doesn't seem to be happening. It's because other temptations are coming in and it's your accessibility and your uh, basically hiddenness about it. 
And it, these are going to help strengthen you in order to overcome and feed the godly appetite that you should be having in these areas. So it's your accessibility. So wisdom for you is to make a list mentally on a piece of paper, whatever, of how and when you view pornography or you read pornography. Say it's your phone. Say it's a computer, it's videos, whatever you do. Cut them off. There should be many people in the church who have flip phones. Unashamedly, they should have a flip phone. And a flip phone is a phone that doesn't get internet access, that doesn't have access to these things. If you're honest and you're saying, oh, I know and I don't like my viewing and participation in pornography, but uh, maybe I just need to change my heart, but I'm leaving this provision for the flesh there. I'm leaving it there. Jesus says, cut it off, cut it out. Many, many, many times, and the largest percentage of people who do not cut this out, take this extreme measure of cutting out these channels, in a sense, they won't succeed. They, they'll stay in this temptation. They stay in this area and they continue to, to suffer in this way. You, you hurt the body of Christ. You, you are not alone in this and you hurt your relationship with God. And the flip side is as you do not participate in a sinful lifestyle, you strengthen the body of Christ and your relationship with the Lord. And Christ has come to give you life more abundantly, the fullness of life, to be freed from the power of sin. To be bound by sin is slavery. And Christ came to set you free. So the first thing you want to do is your accessibility. Get extreme. Throw away your phone. I don't care. There's no cost that's too high to have a righteous lifestyle. Get, get rid of your computer. Get rid of your phone. Whatever access you have. And it doesn't matter if it's going to cost you something. There is going to be a high cost at times. And maybe you can't get an email from your work or you got to move companies. Whatever. It would be better to live as a poor person and write with God than have all the riches in the world, like Christ says, and, and go right into hell. The next thing is accountability. This is where the body of Christ comes in. And the body of Christ is called the church, the local church, and in particular, Barabbas Road Church. Many people, and I don't want to be rude or something, they're like, I'm a the church is too good for me sort of thinking. I want to talk to some mumbo jumbo guy down the street about my struggles, assuming that nobody in the church or the church leadership has ever heard of sin, um, that they've never been tempted by sin or anything like that. The reality is the church and the church leadership are unequivocally sinners. And that is the core of Christianity. We're sinners, but yet... Christ is the sinless one, our Savior. So that's the basis. The entry point into Christianity is knowing you're a sinner. So understand that everybody in the church understands sin and temptation. Galatians tells us the one that is spiritual, that is walking by the, the fruit of the Spirit, bearing the fruit of the Spirit, is to, to bear up, to help the one who's struggling, but not to think of themselves too highly. Maybe they're not tempted in that same way, but they know temptation. So even if someone you're talking with doesn't have the same temptation as pornography, they have other temptations, and with Christian maturity, they should be able to come alongside. So accountability. Imagine you, you walk in a room, and you have an appetite to view pornography, and it's there, and nobody's around. You're going to view it. But if you walk in a room, and you have an appetite for it, and it's all around, but like your family's in the room, you're not going to participate in it. So this accountability keeps you um, accountable, and it helps reveal these to you. So oftentimes, sometimes I do this with people, they text me like the number one if they hadn't viewed pornography that day. And this is just for them, like, ah, I'm going to have to give a report to someone. So feel free to set up a reporting system with someone. This isn't the ultimate goal, but this is a means by which to, to control this sin that's been life dominating. Now, a lot of people, and science has shown it, it's Pornography becomes addictive by nature. We call this a, a life-dominating sin. This is true. No one's going to deny that your flesh has been fed so much that it desires these things. And in weak states or states of temptation, it yells at you, it screams at you to participate and view this. But that's not an excuse in that moment to do it. There's never a point in your life where you have to sin. You say, well, I was exposed to it young. I've been doing this for years. Yeah, yeah. There's no point in your Christian life where you have to sin at that moment. So accountability. Be open and honest. If you're in a 242 group, 
speak to the people in the group about it. Start to, to open up and they're going to pray for you and with you. And through this, you start to shine light on it. And uh, along with that, kind of one, one more aspect. If you're sitting around talking about how bad of a pornographer you are, that's a miserable Christian life. You need to start focusing on what God is calling you to do. Instead of sitting around, why don't you start praying for missionaries, for an example, or, or write a letter to someone thanking them for something. I don't know, do Christian ministry. God says, present your members, your actual physical body, for the work of the ministry, not for selfish indulgence. And so you need to positively start to act and do what God is calling you to do, rather than just, because people often do this, oh, I got my accountability group, and you show up, oh yeah, I like pornography, me too, I looked at pornography this week, great, oh, okay, I'm a loser. It's just, bleh. there's no life, there's no fruit, it's not, the, the thing is, what are you doing and where are you going? I'm a sinner, yep, okay, I get tempted these ways, okay, let's, let's make a, a plan so you can really wrestle and go against it, but what are you going to do instead? What are you gonna do instead when this temptation comes? So. That's part of the accountability you guys stir each other on. And then the appetite. This is the final thing. Once the flesh stops getting fed so much, it becomes weaker. And the way you stop feeding the flesh is by feeding the spirit. That is by doing things God's way, what he is calling you to do. So as you proactively do things God's way, so you need to be about something, not just against something. So you're proactively doing what God is calling you to do. Your appetite for sin starts to get weaker. Your appetite for righteousness starts to grow. And before you know it, that appetite has disappeared. Now that doesn't mean it's gone forever or it'll never come again. The second you start feeding the flesh, it gets hungrier and stronger and more powerful. So you need to constantly be on guard. We're, we're told to put on the whole armor of Christ so we can stand in that day of temptation. And if we go into battle, not prepared, not ready, no plans, when temptation comes, it's going to chop your head off. You're dead. And temptation, I often compare it to like a fishing lure. It is tempting. It's not like there's temptation and it does not tempt me. Temptation is by definition something that's tempting. So you need to be on guard and about that. And being in prayer and being in the Word of God, that is reading the Word of God, the Spirit of God brings and strengthens you. And ultimately, say your appetite goes to nothing. You have the self-control, the fruit of the Spirit. Now, even if you have accessibility to pornography and there's nobody, in a sense, quote, you're, you know, talking with about this, you're okay in the sense because your appetite isn't there. You can go in and, you know, it, it's not there. So the ultimate goal for a Christian is the appetite, but you need to go after the flesh first. So dealing with pornography, large percentage of the population has fallen into this temptation. I mean, in the book of Revelation, it talks about the whore of Babylon being drunk on her, her immorality in the sense that in the last days, the whole globe will be out of their minds with immorality. And this is pushing forward a foretaste of this. So just because your culture is belligerent with sexual immorality, doesn't mean you need to live in that lifestyle. And just because you've had that experience up to this point, know that God offers you hope and grace. And you need to confess your sin before God, first and foremost. And you need to you know, pray to God, ask God, come to those in the church, church leadership, for continued counsel and strength. But get radical. Cut off your channels. Start to tell someone about it and start feeding your godly appetite. And this is the means of your sanctification. So I hope this blesses you and uh, be willing to you know, approach someone in the church or church leadership about this. We want you to uh, know the fullness of life. So God bless.